Hey, I'm Mark Murphy, and I'm a judge on Chopped, and we're going to cook together today. Today, you're going to be making this great dish with chicken thighs and chicken legs. So go get all your ingredients ready, and let's start cooking. First of all, there's not much cleanup because it's all cooked in one pot, which I'm very excited about. I really love this dish because it was one of those dishes that I made for family meal all the time in the restaurant, and everybody loved it. Flavorful, easy to make, one pot wonder. Okay, so here we go. We've got our chicken thighs and we've got our chicken legs. What I like to do and what you're doing right now is you're gonna pat them dry. You wanna make sure you get all that moisture off of there and then we're gonna dip them into some flour. You see, they're nice and dry. Now you grab some salt and we're gonna season it up nicely. You're seasoning it. How are you seasoning this? I always like to tell everybody, you have to season with authority. What I'm doing now is I'm seasoning with some salt and pepper, and you're doing the same thing. And you notice how high I am? I wanna make sure that that's even. This is another reason why I always use kosher salt in the kitchen. What happens with kosher salt is when your hands, because you're working in a kitchen, you're probably washing your hands all the time, you're moving things around, and your hands are always a little bit damp. And with kosher salt, what happens is it's thicker. It's a little bit thicker than that regular salt, so you can spread it more evenly, and you're not going to get those clumps landing on the actual protein. Very important whenever you're cooking. I always say season it with authority, because that's the name of my cookbook, but also season it because you want to make sure you're bringing those flavors up, and also season very evenly. Now you're going to put the pot on. So now you're seasoning this up nicely. I'm going to season both sides of my chicken. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna throw it into the flour to get a little bit of coating. Now, by the way, not 100% necessary. You could do it without, without the flour. But I like to because it helps sort of thicken the sauce. Here we are, you're seasoning from up high. You're getting a nice even seasoning all over your protein, right? A little pepper. How's that working for you guys? All right. A little bit of olive oil, take some olive oil, put it in the bottom of your pan. Get this nice and warm, probably to about a medium heat. What you're doing is you're looking for the oil to get hot. You're looking for those little waves so you know that the oil is getting nice and hot. Then you add a little bit of butter and that's going to help bring flavor. So while the butter's melting, you can start putting your chicken into the flour, coating it lightly. And then you're gonna tap it off a little bit before it goes in. So now my butter, is your butter melting like this? You want it to melt, starts to bubble up. Once the butter's melted, you're gonna start putting in your chicken thighs. Skin side down. I wanna get that skin nice and crispy and rendering out the fat on the skin. Look at that. Can you smell it? Can you hear it? You notice how I'm knocking off some of the flour? And here's a little tip for you guys at home. When you're putting something into a pan like this, the temperature of the pan's gonna drop pretty quickly. So I'm putting in my thighs. Now I'm gonna do my, my chicken legs. So you're gonna roll them around the flour. And while I'm doing that, you see what's happening? The temperature is coming back up because all of that chicken that went in there brings the temperature of the pot down, and now we're ready to throw in the legs. Same way, you're tapping off a little bit of the flour and putting it in there. We're gonna brown them all around, right? And now remember, this looks a little crowded, but proteins are gonna shrink, so there's gonna be more room in there. So just to be, just to be nice and safe, you're gonna wanna take everything that's touched the chicken and put it away or get it into a sink and get it out of here. Take all this flour, all this touch the chicken. You're gonna get rid of that. Now you notice I didn't actually touch that chicken with my hands. I only used the tongs and I used the, the, uh, the actual plates here. So we're getting a little bit of color here. So while the chicken's getting a little color on it, we're gonna go over here and peel our shallots and our garlic. So taking our shallots, taking a knife, cutting off the end, cutting off both ends of the shallot, as you can see here. And then what I do is I cut them right in half because that's where you're gonna see how we're gonna cut them. 
And what this allows me to do is now I can just pick up the shallot and get that first layer of skin off. And then you put your shallots over here. We're going to slice those in a second. So once I cut it in half, I can then get my fingers underneath there and peel that outer layer. You don't want to put that outer layer in your, in your dish. And by the way, while you're doing this, you got to keep one eye over there on the chicken. You don't want it to burn. So you can always slow the pot down if it's going too fast and it's taking you a little bit longer to peel the shallots. Nope, not a problem. You can wait. Also, you know, when I cook, I don't know if you guys do this, I always have like a sort of a discard bowl right in front of me. So I don't have to go looking for the garbage. I just put everything right in there and it's right there. We're going to go over and check on the chicken. We're getting a little bit of color. It looks like it needs to go a little longer. Here, let me show you what this looks like. So what we have here is it's a little bit browning, but we want that to be a little bit more. Some people ask me, how much longer should it cook? I don't really think of it in time. I think of it as, you know how much longer this has to cook? It has to cook just the right amount of time for me to peel four heads, four cloves of garlic. You know, if this is a little bit overwhelming for you, keeping an eye on the chicken and peeling your garlic and peeling your shallots, what you can do is you can just turn that down whenever you want. Or what you could do is you could do this beforehand. You could peel the garlic, you could peel the shallots ahead of time so you're ready to go. You could have all of you, your, what we call in the business, mise en place. Mise en place means everything's in its place. So you could do the garlic peeling, the garlic chopping, the shallot peeling, and you could do that ahead of time. Or if you're a little nervous about the chicken overcooking, just turn it down, take your time. It's your kitchen, do whatever you want. Well, I know we've turned the, your kitchen into the Food Network kitchen, but you can still control when you're doing certain things. What I've done is I've peeled my shallots, I've peeled my garlic, now I'm gonna go back to the chicken and flip it over because I think it's just the right amount of color on it. You see that? That's gorgeous. Look at that, the chicken is perfect. I always describe a chicken that looks like that. It's a chicken who got a nice suntan. Now remember, this is something to think about. You put that chicken in there and it was room temperature. Now when you flip it, it's gonna go a little bit faster because that chicken is now warmed up by sitting in the pan. It's not bringing the oil temperature and the butter down. So you're gonna keep browning it, but it's gonna go a little bit faster, so just keep an eye on it. So now what you're doing is you're gonna cut up your garlic and your shallots. Remember, holding the knife properly. One finger here, one finger here gripping the handle so you know exactly where your knife is going to land. Get your fingers, curl the front of your fingers underneath, and then bring the knife down. Rub the, rub the, the knife along the knuckle so you're not going to hurt yourself. And if you have to, obviously I've been doing this a little longer, I flip the end down, I'll show you that again. I'll go almost to the end, and then right at the end, flip it over, this way it gives you more room to be able to cut. I don't want anybody to feel intimidated by this. It's just cooking. Let's go check over here. Got some nice color going on. I'm gonna cut the garlic the same way, just slices. I'm not scared of garlic. You should not be scared of garlic. You're gonna cook this all the way through. It's gonna cook for a while. It's not raw garlic. It's delicious garlic. What you're doing next is now the chicken is browned on both sides. Take the chicken out and let it rest on a rack. The reason I'm doing this is I want those shallots and that garlic to get clarified and cook in these beautiful juices and the fat down here. Now mind you, there's a little bit too much fat. So I'm just gonna take maybe one spoonful out and I think that's good. And by the way, that's up to you. I can tell you one thing. If you left that in there, I don't think anybody would notice. Take your shallots and your garlic and put them in there. Look at that. You're stirring it around. Nice flavors coming off of this. 
All right. Now your shallots and your onions. Stir them around a little bit. They got a nice little bath in that oil. I think those shallots and onions, they look very, very happy. Now we're gonna hit it with some white wine. Just give it one quick stir. We wanna make sure that alcohol cooks off. You wanna cook off the alcohol because or else it's just too much of a, too much alcohol flavor and it's not good. But this way, that's all it took, look at that. About a minute or two, that's not much wine, it'll cook, cooks right off. Now we're gonna start warming up the rest of the ingredients that all of this stuff is gonna cook into. We're gonna put four cups of chicken stock, that's basically one of these. How's it going at home? You guys okay? Not very complicated, is it? I'm really happy we're doing this because I want you to have more confidence in the kitchen. Something I always tell people, if they haven't started cooking yet and they're just sort of getting started, the most important thing is what we did earlier. Chopping those shallots, cutting up that garlic, it's getting your knife skills down. Practicing cutting things takes the intimidation out of cooking. That's very, very important to think about. Okay. So now you've got that chicken stock in there. It's getting, it's, it's, it's heating up. You're gonna put the crushed tomatoes in here as well, one can. And by the way, if you have a half a can of tomatoes left from another recipe another day, just use the half a can. It's not that big a deal. Let's bring this to a boil. In the meantime, you're gonna take the potatoes and cut them up and put them in there. Potatoes, once again, holding the knife properly, I cut them in half, and then probably three or four pieces. Depends on the size of your potato. You could have cut those in three or four. Depends how long you think it's gonna take. So, and as you know, you wanna have a potato cooked all the way through. You don't want a raw potato. You know, this is one of those dishes, and as I mentioned to you earlier, I used to make it a lot for family meal in the restaurant. I would go into the refrigerator and I'd see what's lying around. I had some potatoes, I'd put the potatoes in. If I don't have the potatoes, you don't need them. If you have some turnips, you could put them in here. You could put zucchini in here. You could put all sorts of vegetables. Now you're putting your potatoes in this liquid. Give it a little stir. I'm gonna add some thyme. So here I've got a couple sprigs of thyme, and this is you don't eat the thyme. So instead of putting these four or five sprigs of thyme, just throwing them in there and then having to go fish them out, what I'll do is I'll take a little piece of butcher's twine, tie it together. Now here's something, here's a little trick. So you don't have to have putting your finger on it. Something that I learned from a butcher once. You take it, you go around once, you go around twice, and then it stays. And then you can do your second knot without having to hold your finger there. And then it stays, and then you take this and drop it right into your sauce. The reason I'm tying that together is because I don't want to have to go fish out all of those thyme sprigs. It'll be easier to find it with that string on it. I'm going to throw some capers in here. Now remember, capers are salty. The other ingredient you're putting in are these olives, and they're salty as well. Very important when you're cooking. If you run across an ingredient that's in a recipe and you're doing something, make sure you taste it because then you know what you're cooking with. You know where those flavor profiles are. You know where the things are going. If I was to cook, let's say, with a bunch of capers and I didn't know what a caper was, I didn't know that they were full of salt, well then I could really mess up a dish by adding too much salt separately. Make sure you know what you're cooking with. So instead of having to pick up all these ingredients right now that I've just chopped, and this is true with onions, with anything you're chopping in your cutting board, instead of scooping it up, there's two things you can do. One, you can move your cutting board to the edge Take your bowl and then drop it in there. Makes it a lot easier to get your stuff off the cutting board. Also, you might have noticed this right here. That is a little sticky pad that you put under the cutting board so the cutting board doesn't slide while you're chopping. If you don't have one of those little sticky pads, what I usually do at home is I'll just take two paper towels, wet them a little bit and put them under my cutting board. This way the cutting board doesn't slide. Because if your cutting board slides while you're chopping, you could get in trouble. You might hurt yourself. Now take your olives and put them into this liquid. Now we've got all these little bowls. Get this out of the way. Let's give it a little stir. Now, 
it's time to introduce the chicken to the chicken sauce. Take your chicken, you're gonna pick it up, you're gonna put it right back in here. You can see, you want, you're, you're hopefully at home, you are, you're boiling a little bit, but now that everything's together, we've got a nice boil going, we're gonna turn it down, because now, Instead of boiling it, we want this to cook slowly. We want all these flavors to meld together. We want the potatoes to cook. We want the chicken to cook all the way through. So you can see now it's, now it's all boiling. You're going to want to turn that down to a simmer, which means the bubbles are going to get a little smaller. It's going to cook a little bit more gently and a little slower. You see how we're slowing it down? And now put the lid on it. So that's pretty much the one pot wonder. I'm gonna let this cook for about 25 minutes and now I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then we can enjoy our food. Okay, so this has been cooking for about 25, 30 minutes. Look at that. Now you guys are ready to have a nice little lunch or dinner at home. What you've got is a nice thick sauce, which is gonna taste delicious but make sure you do, as we said earlier, taste everything as you go along. Because you could then, you could then adjust your seasoning here. You could add a little bit more salt if you need to, but this one turned out just right. So you're gonna take out your chicken, you're gonna take out your thigh, and you can see your fork goes right through it. It's definitely cooked all the way through. And if you're worried about that, Flip it over. If you go right next to the bone, that's where it's gonna tell you right off the bat. If it's still a little bit pink there, then you should cook it for a little bit longer. But as you can see right now, this is cooked absolutely perfectly. So I'm gonna take a thigh and a leg out. I'm gonna take some of the potato. Make sure you grab all the ingredients. I see, see I got a couple uh, olives there. You're gonna wanna put some olives on there. Look at that. That to me, it's absolutely delicious. Now, I got myself a slotted spoon, but I think I want one of these spoons so I can actually get more of the sauce in this dish. There's a lot of sauce. And this is a great dish. You can get a nice piece of bread and soak up that sauce at the end. All right, we're ready to eat. Are you ready to eat? Let's take a little bite and see how it turned out. Chicken looks nice and tender. I've got my potato cooked all the way through. I'm gonna grab an olive. Mmm. This is just fantastic. I love all the flavors that developed in here. You can taste the tomato. You can taste the, um, the chicken is just absolutely delicious. Seasoned perfectly. So if you were to make this and you're just by yourself at home, I'm not sure if you already had friends over, this is enough for about four people. If you have leftovers, Cool it properly before you put it away. Take a dish, maybe like this, or a Tupperware if you have it. Take your chicken. Put all the leftovers into a dish. The reason I'm using a flat dish like this is I just feel like it's gonna cool quicker. It's gonna cool a little faster before it goes into the refrigerator. You do not wanna put hot liquids, hot food away in the refrigerator covered. So what I would probably do is put this right like that. I would put it in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes maybe, and then take it out when it's cooled all the way through and then wrap it up and leave it in the fridge, reheat it tomorrow. You got yourself a great little lunch. Well, thanks again for cooking along with me. And remember, this is just one pot you gotta clean at the end. Pretty simple.